Nature knows no indecencies. Man invents them. Mark Twain wrote that more than a hundred years ago, alluding to a notion he often reiterated in his work. He believed vulgarity and obscenity, or the things and ideas people label that way, are only vulgar and obscene to man. Twain believed nothing occurring in the natural world should be viewed in such terms. Shame is a feeling known only by man, exclusive to the soiled mind of the lowest animal. That was one killer shot at a boy. You see, Twain didn't think of indecency as an inherent value. He considered it a purely man-made construct, a reaction to something more than the thing itself. And although I, I hate to question one of the greatest writers ever to put pen to paper, I have to wonder whether the century that's passed since his death might have changed his mind. Now, it's not that indecency is a concept born in the 21st century. Mankind has been an indecent lot for thousands of years. But as we've become more insulated from death, we've developed a kind of fascination with it. Things like hunting and butchering, for example, things that were once part of a daily human existence, have been hidden away by shiny glass storefronts, wrapped in sterilized plastic and shipped in styrofoam. And as we've grown detached from the natural concept of death and killing, we've replaced it with something else, something much darker. Based on his writings, you have to think Twain would defend a game like this, that he'd be appalled to find the leaders of men deeming it indecent for human consumption. I realize Twain has a somewhat timeless argument, but times have changed. This is one of the most difficult reviews I've ever had to write. As antithetical as it feels, I'm pulled from my natural inclination for artistic freedom when I play this game. I've never believed in censorship, but when a piece of media requires me to pull a plastic bag over a person's head to strangle and suffocate them, I start to question Mark Twain's ideas on indecency. I start to question whether some things are just inherently inappropriate. I start to question manhunt. Now, there are usually two components to a video game, right? There's a gameplay mechanic, and there's a premise or environment into which it's placed. What makes Manhunt such a hard game to review is that, in this case, the premise is its selling point. You can make as many arguments as you'd like to the contrary, but Manhunt is a game about violence. The gameplay mechanics, the level designs, all the functional aspects we evaluate when reviewing video games, they take a back seat to this. That is, if there's any room for them in the car at all. Beneath its gritty and controversial facade, Manhunt is a third-person stealth game developed by Rockstar Games. You play as a convict named James Earl Cash, who awakens after his supposed execution to instructions from a voice, from a man who calls himself the Director. He promises Cash that if he follows his instructions, he'll be free before the night is over. What he doesn't tell him is how grisly that night will be. Aesthetically, Manhunt is like an interactive snuff film. Your objective is to sneak around the environment in classic stealth fashion and kill enemies, but the hook is what happens next. Successful kills prompt incredibly gruesome cutscenes, portraying perhaps the most vivid and horrific violence in the history of the medium. This is a game about shock value. The question is, is there a purpose? Come back for part two as we take a look at Manhunt's mechanics and merit, or lack thereof. There's a lot to say about this game, so discuss in the comments, and be sure to check out the conclusion of our review of Manhunt. Ah. 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 Ah.